Hey bye Thomas here and today we're doing a few things. First off you can see I'm putting out some salt and stuff like that for next season's deer hunting. And as you can see I'm not using the expensive stuff. Um, trace mineral salts work just great. You don't have to buy this fancy stuff that has you know your insert name of hunter celebrity there. It's been working out well for me for years. As you can see this one right here has been used quite often. In total I've put out uh, 300 pounds thus far. I've got a little more to go. But today, we're going to talk about tree identification. This is something I've seen in a lot of forums or anything, and quite frankly, it's abysmal with some folks. Uh, and, I, and I'm not going to lie, I'm, I am not uh, the greatest tree identifier, but I am pretty darn good. I'll say that. I know enough uh, to know what trees are, and if I can't find out what trees are, I know who to ask and everything and where to look it up. So we're going to go through a few trees here and everything, and I'm not going to walk very far. I should be able to cover most of them here, but I will be looking for certain specific ones uh, that people really want to see. First and foremost, we're going to go ahead and look at this leaf right here. This leaf right here, many of you may know, this is a sweet gum. Sweet gums are also indicative of their the little spiky gumballs that they leave on the ground. I'm not seeing any right here, but uh, that's very indicative. Now, the bark of a sweet gum is this right here. This is a sweet gum tree, the bark and everything. It's grayish in color. These are usually pretty soft and everything. You can stick your fingernail into them. This feels, the bark almost feels like um, cork, if you will. And then if you look on the ground, which I'm not seeing any right now, but there'll be like the little seed pods. That, and I'll, I'll, I'll find a good example of those in here in just a second. Again, more sweet gum right here. Notice the uh, the leaf or anything. It's a star pattern leaf or anything. Uh, dead giveaway. Oh, look at there. I wasn't going to talk about this tree, but see that little thing right there? That's holly, American holly. As you can see, it's got all the pointy stuff on it. That's just a little uh, sapling there. And we're going to go over to the tree next to it as well, but we're going to find a bigger version of it. Okay, another tree that people often get wrong or don't know what it is. This is yellow poplar, tulip poplar. This is the state tree of Tennessee. Notice how the bark is very gray in color. Uh, the bark density is a little bit more dense here than it is on sweet gum. And it's almost like, almost like an interwoven pattern. So if you follow these lines down, they just kind of weave throughout it and everything. has got a really distinctive pattern. You'll also get these smooth spots from time to time. And the leaf is a dead giveaway. Looks like a little tulip flower. See that little leaf right there? So dead giveaway on tulip poplar also known as uh, yellow poplar, the uh, state tree of Tennessee. All right, great example of this tree right here. This is what everyone hopes is in their backyard or on some property that they buy. This is black walnut. Now this is a juvenile leaf right here, but you can kind of see the leaf structure. I will zoom in right there. So that's the leaf structure of black walnut. The bark of black walnut, as you can see, is very large and interwoven. You can usually distinguish a black walnut from a long way away. It's dark in color. You've got really deep grooves. These are approaching an inch deep on the grooves or anything. And again, it's got an interwoven pattern. Now, one wood that I do from a distance mess this up with would be like a hickory. Some hickories from a distance can look like black walnut. That's just a, a thing that I've, I've noticed in the past or anything, but um, very easy to see. These large grooves, it's dark in color, should be a, a pretty dead giveaway. Okay, this tree right here, it's an evergreen tree as you see. This is a Eastern Red Cedar. ERC is what a lot of people call it. You have all these little leaves right here. Uh, when I'm deer hunting, I will take this off. I will rub this all over me. That is the sound or smell of our woods up here in Tennessee. I love the smell of cedar. It's just a very great smell. Also, if you're in a survival situation and you need to, you know, make a fire, if you peel off this bark, now this is, right here's a pretty good example, but if you crush this up and everything, it's, it's like very fibrous, very hairy and everything. This is great fire starting stuff right here. This tree right here is... Unfortunately dead, but this was a uh, sassafras tree. That would have been a great example to show, but unfortunately it's dead. Um, 
there's dead uh we call it dead uh, cedar right here and here's some more black walnut again you can see the black walnut uh, pretty much a dead giveaway it looks awesome and this large tree right here is ash this is uh, I can't really tell if it's green or white ash. I'm not the best. I'm going to say it's ash. <laughs> As you can see, the bark on ash. Now, this is actually unfortunate, too, because I don't... The tree looks very healthy and everything right now, but there could be um, emerald boring beetles. They're, they're getting into all the ash trees. It's very unfortunate. So, the bark, similar to black walnut, has these really deep grooves or anything over an inch deep or right at an inch deep or anything and it is very light in color almost like a poplar color so yeah it's uh very distinguishable the, the leaves oh boy they're way up there <laughs> um yeah you got to trust me uh they're kind of i think they're evenly paired so there's going to be a leaf on either side the stem's about 8 to 10 inches long, but there's a leaf on each side that matches up and one leaf off the front. <clears throat> this tree right here. See, folks, we are not moving far. We've already gone through a lot of trees. This right here is a, a dogwood. Dogwood is a very pretty tree. Uh, they don't typically get too big. They grow very slow. Um, the leaf, I wish I could show you the top side of the leaf or anything, but it's got kind of like a... So those are the leaves right there for the dogwood. Um, the dogwood leaves on top of them have like a waxy coating. So from a distance, you can usually tell a dogwood from other species. Also in the bark, the only other bark that's similar to this, I say similar and it, it's not really that similar, it would be like a persimmon. It's, it's these small, they call it, cause they call it like an alligator bark or something like that. Anyways, long story short, um, th this is what the bark looks like on a dogwood and everything. These are old growing trees. You'll often see some of this gray, like moss stuff growing on them there's a couple more ash trees and then right next to it is a red oak okay on a red oak the bark as you can see is kind of darkish in color and it does get these gray spots and stuff like that red oak bark is quite different from that of white oak um i am not seeing a white oak right here but i know we've got one close by i will find one but the bark on red oak is right there the leaf um yeah i won't be able to get a good leaf of it but just know that i only di really distinguish between two oaks here in tennessee there are many others there are many subspecies but you've got your red oaks and you've got your white oaks the red oak is you know very easy to distinguish from the bark it's a hard bark it's a darker bark conversely the white oak is a, is a lighter bark all right so let's go find some more stuff see if we can find some maples which i actually see maple but it's a small one but we're gonna go look at some other stuff stay tuned i love it didn't have to go far to find something else but this right here is a great example of white oak these are the leaves of white oak these are freshly sprouted as you can see a very large leaf and then the bark itself is as you can see much lighter in color it's lighter in color and then on more mature trees you would get some almost like a scaling of the bark so you can see a little bit right here. So the bark on white oak can come off in like these little scale pieces like this. But as you see, the bark is light in color. That is a dead giveaway between a white oak and a red oak. It's, it's lighter in color. And here's a great example because right over here is a red oak. Actually, this one right next to us is, but I'm going to get one that doesn't have poison ivy all over it. All right. So again, this is great because I got a white oak next to me now too. Red oak bark. It's hard. It's dark. Um, these pieces can come off or anything, but it is hard and dark. You'll see these little um, moss things growing up from time to time. And then conversely, there's white oak. White oak and, and even right here, there's white oak. But as you see, white oak bark can be scaly. The leaves on white oak are kind of like these broad leaves right here. And the leaves on this red oak, kind of similar, but they've got uh, jagged points on them. And you really can't tell. Plus, these are all brand new leaves that just came out. But you can tell best from the bark. 
check out the bark there and then check out the bark over there so again darker is your red oak lighter is your white oak there's an old tree stand back over there on a white oak tree all right what else do we have over here some poplars oh here we go here's a good example of a yeah it's cherry but it's it's that's cherry tree right there but it's not the best example so i can't see the leaves let's find another cherry okay so quite literally right across on the field here I actually have some great examples so we were talking about dogwood earlier this is a dogwood see how the leaves have like a waxy coating on top very easy to distinguish i love that dogwoods are very pretty very beautiful trees all right so we have a couple different things here we have a persimmon right here this is a persimmon. I think they also call it like an alligator tree or something like that. The bark on this is huge, like it comparatively, I should say. But it's um, very raised grain. Looks like little stones, if you will, put all into there. Very cool. Um, I don't have a, a good example of the leaf because this is a very tall persimmon tree. But persimmons, you'll know them because during the fall time frame, they're dropping these orangish yellow fruits or anything that are only ripe for about like a one week period. If you get them too early, they will pucker you up like you wouldn't believe. This again is the dogwood bark. So you can see the similarities. You've got the persimmon, which is darker in color and, and very large. This is the dogwood, which is lighter in color and a little bit smaller. And then right back over here, we have cherry. This is a cherry. I, I'm gonna say it's it's a black cherry. I don't know, it's, it's a cherry. Um, the bark on this again, it's not quite as deep as like what it is in persimmon. It can break off. It's almost like a scaly type bark. It's got like a grayish color. Um, the leaves. Here we go. Let's see if I can get a leaf picture. Those are the leaves of cherry. You know, it's not the best example and everything, but really the dead giveaway on cherry is the bark. The bark is an absolute dead giveaway. It looks like cherry. <laughs> it's, I don't know how else to explain it. All right, let's find, there's some more um, uh, poplars right there. Poplars typically grow straight as an arrow. As you can see, these are pretty dang straight. And let's see if we can find some other unique woods. Stay tuned. Okay, so here's another great example. This is an American beech. As you can see, the color of the beech tree itself behind all those leaves and everything is a gray bark. It is a very smooth bark and get up nice this is a big one this is a big beech tree so as you can see the bark is very smooth or anything this is the one where i mean people would carve into it and stuff like that they do like a heart shape and everything and over time that would continue to grow out any kind of damage to the bark will remain on the tree the leaves as you can see are right here it's really not the best example i'm always looking for more mature leaves so anyways those are the leaves right here what i'll say about a beech tree it will slap you harder than any other leaf out in the forest i mean it absolutely whacks the crap out of you we've got another black walnut tree right there again dead giveaway on the canopy of the tree it's not really full and also another good dead giveaway would be if you find on the ground if you, if you get into a black walnut orchard it's about the only things around um, because they put all the tannic acids and stuff into the soil when they drop their seeds and stuff like that. And it kills off a lot of things. It's kind of interesting. But, as you can see, very indicative of that very large raised bark. It's very deep and it's dark in color. This is a younger beech tree. This is a good example of the leaf up close and personal. So, this is a tree that when you drive by with your tractor, it will just absolutely slap you in the face and pretty much knock you off your feet. Um, I'm looking for a hickory tree, and I believe that is a hickory tree right there. Ah, oh, here we go. This is a good example. I know I got to find a tree that goes with it now. That's a gumball. I'm sure you've all seen these and everything. That's a gumball off of sweet gum. Where did this sweet gum come from? There's a sweet gum tree around here somewhere. I just don't see it. Okay, so that tree right there is a hickory tree but i want to show a better example of it 
I guess I can use this juvenile one because I got some leaves close by. This is a hickory tree right here. Um, and there's a little bit older hickory tree right there. If you notice, the bark is kind of interwoven like we've seen on like the black walnuts and like what we've seen on the poplar and stuff like that. And it is gray in color. What gives us away though is also the leaf. I got a leaf close enough you can see it. But that leaf right there is what gives it away. It's um, it's kind of a broad leaf and it's very uniform in shape. Let me see if we can find something else down here. We haven't found a box elder yet and we haven't found, I'm sure there's, there's something else that's pretty common down here. Let's find some sassafras. That's a good one to find, so stay tuned. That's awesome. It's just so awesome out here. The deep, dark woods. <laughs> but uh, it sounds beautiful out here. You hear the wind, all the beautiful birds and everything. Um, I didn't see any sassafras up in the field. Now we're going to kind of walk down here in the bottoms. Um, I was looking for a sycamore, and I think I see one up ahead of us. Sycamore is another tree you typically find in a wet situation. And I don't think it gets much more wetter than a creek bed. Other than, you know, maybe actual water, but <laughs> it's a dry creek bed here, and I do see a sycamore in front of us. Uh, right here. I'm also kind of looking for morel mushrooms. It is a bit late, but there's always a chance. So this is sycamore right here. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see that bark, and we'll see if we can find some of the leaves, because the leaves are huge. Okay, so this is sycamore. Sycamore has a kind of a scaly bark. There is a snail. Pretty cool. Okay, so sycamore has a scaly bark, and it has these sections of, like, no bark, which is pretty cool as it gets higher up. It's a cool interlocking green. Um, I'm looking for a leaf. That's not way up there, but they're way up there. Very large, broad leaf. Some of the largest leaves out there. Also, here's a great example of a red maple. Or what we call down here, swamp maple. This is a red maple right here. Uh, very beautiful wood to cut. I love cutting uh, maples. I think they're absolutely beautiful. And here's a great example of a maple leaf. This is a leaf off of a red maple. So there you go, there's two more trees. That's a large black walnut right there. You can see the dark color of the uh, bark itself. And you can see those large uh, grains or the, the how they pop and everything. All right, here's an example. We've already gone over this tree, so you may know this. This is the tulip poplar, or also known as the yellow poplar, state tree of Tennessee. Um, that is a large maple right there. That's a really, really big maple. That's an old maple. So if that tree ever comes down, believe me, you, I'm going to come out here and get that tree because that is absolutely beautiful. All right, let's see what else we can find down here in this creek bottom. Maybe some raw mushrooms. That would be a real treat. Success. We have found a few sassafras trees. This is the bark of a sassafras. Again, kind of looks interlocking, but what is a dead giveaway? Let's see if I can get a picture of the leaf. Wish I had some leaves close by here. That is a sassafras leaf. So it looks like a uh, dinosaur foot. You got a three prong there. You can also have a broad leaf. There's actually three different types of leaves you can have on a sassafras tree. But that just shows you kind of what it looks like. Uh, it's kind of a, it can have some like brownish orange to the bark, if you will. And it is very soft. Um, let's see what else do we have. Got some more oaks and stuff like that. Some cherry. There. Sweet gum. All sorts of stuff out here. But yeah, just a, a quick little walk in the woods or anything. Kind of help you go over some types of wood out here. Not everything. But there, there's a lot of these small ones. It's hard to tell when they're real small. Like, yeah, it's just hard. <laughs> but... For the most part, I know enough to know what I have, or and if I need to, I can look up a field guide. There's a few trees, like I have a hard time telling an elm tree because we don't have a lot of elm trees 
that I deal with. Like I've seen a few, and once I start seeing more, I can figure it out. Also box elder, and we're gonna go up. I've got some box elder and some pecan up front. We're gonna go ahead and show you those. Box elder, certain times of year I can distinguish them better when the leaves start to have a, a slight different look to them, but yeah, just beautiful out here though. Absolutely beautiful. And here's a good example of a dogwood. Notice the, kind of the waxy coating on the leaves and the actual bark itself, followed by a hickory tree. This is hickory right here. Again, you can see, first off, you can see all the hickory nuts here on the ground that the squirrels have gone through. Uh, very interwoven bark, um, grayish in color. Uh, you do get some scaly bark hickories too, or shag bark. Um, the leaves, these are kind of juvenile leaves right now, but as you can see, they're um, kind of even on both sides, one off the front. Um, pretty easy to identify in the woods. This right here is a tree that certain times of year I can find really well, other times not so much, but this is a box elder. Box elder looks, the bark is similar to maybe poplar or an ash or something like that. Um, it's similar. And there's a nail, two screws in there, so don't ever want to cut this one. Anyways, um, yeah, so the bark's kind of grayish in color, and the leaves themselves, uh, as you can see, kind of what they look like and everything. These are, again, uh, leaves that are just freshly come out, so they're, you know, at their finest, if you will. This right here is a Chinese chestnut, and I'm not seeing any of the chestnuts on the ground around here. But uh, as you can see the bark on this, uh, light gray in color. The leaves are kind of like a long leaf, if you will. And the chestnuts that come off this, they're kind of like these hairy, imagine an acorn with like this spiky hairy thing on top and everything. Um, and they are, they are quite large. All right, so let's go up and show you some pecan now. So up here at the front of our property, we have like a little pecan orchard or grove, if you want to call it. These are the leaves of a pecan tree kind of similar to any of your other nut trees like your hickory and and your black walnut and stuff like that and the bark grayish in color um, you'll notice most of these are gonna be planted by people so they're usually spaced out in such a manner like this pretty easy to identify uh, we're gonna ride up there and I'm gonna show you one other cool tree that's out in this area Okay, so this tree right here, some of the old timers might know what this is. You have a very large leaf, almost can be like a heart shape, very large leaf. Um, and then you may know what this is right here. This is a Catalpa, or Catalpa tree, however you want to say it and everything. So, um, bark is not really how I distinguish this tree. I distinguish this tree by these giant leaves. I mean, they're, they're very large. These giant leaves here, and also, this tree gets a very large uh, grouping of flowers on it, white flowers. So it looks pretty cool. But as you can see, this is a rather large one here. It's been trimmed back due to it being close to the power lines. But uh, dead giveaway by these um, leaves here and everything. And then the old timers would go through here and get the worms off this tree. It's like a symbiotic relationship and everything and use them as fish lures. And of course, here's some uh, pine. Yay, pine. <laughs> Just coming from South Mississippi. Yeah, I know all about pine. Well, yeah, pretty neat stuff. Um, I've actually never gotten a Catawba worm off of a tree, so I've got to learn how to do that if I want to do some fishing and stuff like that with these. So, we'll see. Hope you found this interesting. Just something different as we go out here and enjoy our phenomenal farm up here in Tennessee. Here soon we'll be getting some of my mom's horses out here. So I don't have to mow all this stuff because there's a lot of good grass out here. Beautiful pond. So just a few trees we went over. I uh, just wanted to just share some of my knowledge and hopefully it helps some of y'all out. I'm going to do the same thing kind of down in Mississippi. All right, we'll see you around. Please like, subscribe. Thanks.